I'm on the line with us is our buddy Heidi S uh, Sigmund Kuda, who is the author and award-winning uh, investigative reporter, co-host of the Radicalized Truth Survives podcast, and uh, publisher of the BettyDangerous.com, B-E-T-T-E, Dangerous.com, uh, regular newsletter on Substack. And uh, apropos of, of uh, Julian Assange being released from jail yesterday, uh, I, I wanted to get her on because she's done such, just such great uh, deep, deep dives here into uh, you know, the, these background crimes that Assange and Roger Stone and Donald Trump Jr. and all were involved with. I, I briefly summarized yesterday Donald Trump Jr.'s correspondences with WikiLeaks uh, around the time of the 16 uh, election, but Heidi really has has the goods. Heidi, welcome back to the program. Um, uh, tell us, tell us where, where would be the beginning of this story in your mind? Um, well, thank you so much for having me on, Tom, and you're always so kind um, to talk about the work I do at Betty Dangerous. For me, it was really important uh, in recent months to look back at the 2016 election attack, which I think is really uh, the greatest crime in American history. And you have this network, and you just named some of them, Roger Stone, uh, you have uh, Julian Assange, you have Trump himself. Uh, all working toward uh, ensuring Trump's victory and Hillary Clinton's defeat. And I think where you start is now that Assange has uh, pled guilty to espionage, do we have to still pretend he's a journalist? Because journalists don't traffic in stolen goods from Russian military intelligence. Those stolen goods then not only helped throw an election, but fanned a whole bunch of conspiracies. And as you probably know, Assange himself went on Dutch television and tried to pin it on Seth Rich. And I think that when you're talking about journalism, number one, you don't steal. Number two, who continually came to Assange's rescue? Uh, RT. He had his own propaganda show on RT. Yeah. So I feel like it's really good to start there. And the last thing is I understand that we're in a time of conspiracies and a time of cult. And I understand a cult of Assange has been created. Um, but when that when that uh, messaging and the work he is doing is literally to help uh, destroy democracies and who always continually benefits the oligarchs and Putin and the extreme right in America, I think we have to look at it with more of a jaundiced eye. So let's tell the specific story here, Heidi. Um, the Did this begin with Donald Trump saying, Russia, if you're listening, get Hillary Clinton's emails? Was that the starting point for this particular story? If you look at my uh, number four or number three in my 2016 election attack series, it kind of lays out how it all came together. It was all happening at the same time. You have Trump saying, Russia, if you're listening, you have Roger Stone bragging about communicating with Assange and Guccifer 2.0, who we know was Russian military intelligence. And the reason we know that, despite Assange's obfuscation and Roger Stone's lies, is at the same time, 17 American intelligence agencies told us it was Russia. So yes, it was all converging at the exact same time. And of course, it results in the October surprise. And what do we know, Tom? We know that Hillary Clinton only lost that election by something like 77,000 votes. So this all matters. And for me, the most important thing is that we are living in a time in the last decade, we've lost about 25% of the uh, democratic ruled countries globally. We're now up to 78% uh, being ruled by autocracies as opposed to 50% a decade ago. And Assange and WikiLeaks is part of that. It is part of moving the globe to a uh, less democratic uh, world. And we know that more democracies would actually be better for people. Right, so so Trump says, I, I'd like to get into the weeds here. So Trump says, you know, Russia, if you're listening, uh, you know, basically hack the DNC. Russia did hack the DNC. Um, and then what happened? 
There is a, a dump by WikiLeaks of 20,000 emails from Hillary Clinton. Those emails are then used to fan conspiracy theories such as Pizzagate, which of course are being rebooted again. So, and then Roger Stone then goes on and brags about his communication. Mm -hmm. And what we have ultimately then, uh, this leads up to Comey reopening the email investigation. And what do you know, a few days later, there's an election and Donald Trump wins. Right, right. So uh, Roger Stone, so, so we had communication between uh, the Trump campaign and Russians. Um, we had 17 intelligence agencies telling us that Russia was interfering in our election. Why was there never any I, 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 prosecution of this? I, I, I get it that Bob Mueller, Robert Mueller, uh, actually indicted, what, 23 Russians, as I recall? Uh, it was, I, I think it was 13. And okay. what, what ultimately happened is the lawyers who were defending the Russians indicted from the various units that were used to attack and hack our, uh, the Democrats, as well as the Republicans, and those documents, of course, weren't released. Uh, the reason that um, uh, that was not ultimately uh, concluded is because the lawyers representing the Russians were asking for discovery, and in the discovery, uh, the uh, Department of Justice and the FBI would have to reveal how they got their information. So it was literally a national security risk to continue pursuing that. Wow. Wow. Wow, right? Yeah. 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 So, <laughs> yeah. so uh, you know, are are the Russians still playing a big role in Republican politics like they were in 2016? Yeah, of course. Any any opportunity. And and first of all, we right right now what's happening is that we now are uh, because of the cult of MAGA, because of the cult of QAnon, because of. Uh, all of the extreme religious right, and of course, even the cult of Assange factors into this. We're now doing their work for them. The goal in all of this is to keep Americans fighting each other, so we're not paying attention to what's happening on the global stage. And what's happening on the global stage, as you know, is that the oligarchs aligned with the autocrats no global warming is real. They are doing a global resources grab while we all fight each other. And I think that is the bigger picture. And people like Assange have been facilitating that. I understand people going back a decade ago, think of him heroically, think of him as a whistleblower. But I really think all of this was set in play before we even knew what cyber warfare was, before we really knew that we were in a great information war. And I think one of the things that's important is to look at what hasn't been done by Assange, according to his own allies. He hasn't done anything to hurt Russia, and in fact had his own propaganda show, as I said earlier. So the Russians opportunistically will, of course, do everything to ensure uh, that Joe Biden does not get in. But the problem is that, you know, we are now helping do that work for them by continuing to fight among each other, as opposed to do what Americans used to be great at, which is align against fascism and align against authoritarianism. Yeah, yeah, it's really a tragedy. And and your, your uh, coverage of this over at BettyDangerous.com, B-E-T-T-E, Dangerous.com, uh, has been just spectacular. And uh, this latest piece, uh, 2016 election attack, I, I realize it's, it's a somewhat recycled piece, but uh, it's brilliant. And I encourage oh, you're people. You're so to kind. It. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, you're so kind. Thank, Thank you, you, Betty Tom. or Heidi. <laughs> <laughs> either, either one works. Okay, great having you with us, Heidi S Sigmund Kuda, uh, the author and award-winning investigative reporter, BettyDangerous.com.